You've seen some examples of titration curves where the pH changes as we add, in this case, a strong base to a weak acid. And you've seen a related case titrating a weak acid with a strong base, where we have a buffer region centered on the half equivalence point. What I want to do now is to discuss a framework for thinking about the titration curve that will allow us to easily calculate the pH at any point along it. Here's the idea. When we are under acidic conditions, we need to be thinking about the reaction that includes the hydronium ion, H3O+. This reaction is the standard acid reaction for our weak acid. When we are under basic conditions, we need to be thinking about the reaction that includes the hydroxide ion, OH-. This reaction is the standard base reaction for our conjugate base of the, our weak acid. Remember that the Kb for our conjugate base is Kw divided by the Ka for our acid. So when we are below a pH of 7, we use the acid reaction, and when we are above a pH of 7, we use the base reaction. Whichever reaction we are using, we set up our shifted initial conditions for the equilibrium such that the hydronium and the hydroxide ion concentrations are zero, and start the calculation from there. Let's see how this works. For our starting point, it's pretty simple. We are starting out with just the acetic acid and no hydronium or acetate, and we do our usual ice table. It's when we start adding some base that the perspective I am describing starts to kick in. Remember that we have to take dilution into account, so we should be tracking the number of moles of the substances involved rather than the concentrations. Let's start by looking at what happens when we add 5 milliliters of our base. That's adding 5 times 10 to the negative fourth moles of sodium hydroxide. But our reaction doesn't have sodium hydroxide in it, so what are we going to do with it? Well, which element in the reaction is the one that the hydroxide will react with? Remember, we are leaving our hydronium ion concentration at zero for our in shifted initial conditions. So there are really only two choices, water and acetic acid. And acetic acid is a stronger acid than water. So hydroxide will pull a hydrogen off of that. But look closely at what that means. It means we are converting some of the acetic acid into the acetate ion. How much? Well, however much base we added, five times 10 to the negative fourth moles. This uses up all of the hydroxide that we added. So now we only have to worry about the main acid reaction. We divide these conditions by our diluted volume, 25 plus five milliliters to get our initial concentrations. And then we can solve for the equilibrium conditions using either an ice table or the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Remember that the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is only usable within the buffer region, where the concentrations of the acid and its conjugate base are within about a factor of 10 of each other. The same general approach is used throughout the titration. So at 10 milliliters of sodium hydroxide added, we have twice as much of the acetic acid converted to acetate. We convert back to concentration and calculate our pH. This continues right up to the equivalence point, as long as you remember that once the concentrations get far enough apart, you need to use an ice table instead of the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Once you reach the equivalence point, however, notice what happens. We've run out of acetic acid. That means we now need to deal with the standard base reaction for the acetate ion, not the acid reaction of acetic acid. We calculate our concentrations, plug them into an ice table, and solve for x, and then solve for the pH. Finally, let's see what happens as we move past the equivalence point. Let's just go one more milliliter of sodium hydroxide. We no longer have any acetic acid to pull hydrogens off of, so now we need to track the excess hydroxide. We convert to concentrations, we update our ice table, and notice something. The excess hydroxide now has an X that we are neglecting because it is probably too small to make a difference. This means our pH is going to depend only on how much excess hydroxide there is. We update our calculations to find that X is 1.45 times 10 to the negative eighth. This value is not our hydroxide ion concentration. It is the concentration of undissociated acetic acid. So we have now confirmed that it was valid to neglect X in our ice table. To get our pOH, we just use the excess strong base concentration, which lets us calculate our pH.
Going deeper past the equivalence point doesn't change any of this approach. All you have to do is look at the amount of excess strong base. And it's worth noting that if all you care about is the pH, you don't even need to do the ice table. Once you have the excess amount of base determined, that's all you need. So that is calculating the pH along a titration curve. The general principles are write down the standard acid reaction and the standard base reaction for the conjugate. Determine the equilibrium constants for both reactions. Determine the starting number of moles before adding anything. Determine the number of moles of the strong base, or acid, that you have added for the point you are calculating. Use that added amount to react with the starting acid or base to get your shifted initial conditions. Be sure to convert to concentration using the new total volume. Compare the concentration of the acid and its conjugate base. If they're between 1 to 9 and 9 to 1, use the henderson hasselbalch equation. If you have some of each, but the ratio is too big, make an ice table. If you're at the equivalence point, use the conjugate's standard base or acid reaction. And if you're past the equivalence point, just look at the excess base or acid. To look at this graphically, we have a region here where we use the henderson hasselbalch equation. We have regions just outside the buffer region where we use ice tables for the forward reaction. Above pH 7, we use the ice table for the reverse reaction. And then past the equivalence point, we just look at how much excess base there is. That gives you a way to calculate the pH anywhere along the titration curve.